DaVinci Resolve 16's curves has gotten a refreshing update. We're gonna go over what those updates are, as well as we're gonna dive into the power of curves for those who've never used them. Without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so if we go right over into the color page, what you'll see is behind our curves now, we have a histogram. There's useful information there. Now we can see exactly where everything is falling in relationship to the curves themselves. So that's kind of cool. Uh, before, if you haven't seen this before, before there was just no curves. This is the way it looked. And you had to come over to your scopes. Uh, we have histogram over here. Not a histogram really isn't used that much. It's more of like the wave or the parade that's used more. But now they've added the histogram behind. So that's kind of nice. And by default, it is set up uh, for the histogram as an input. And what that means is whichever node you're on, the uh, scopes that are drawn here is actually from the data that comes into the input for the node that you're currently working on. So if we were to add, let's add a little S curve into here just to add a little bit more contrast. What you'll notice is that nothing changed here, but once we make another node, since everything's set up for the input, we come over to our other node, now we can see that adjustment. So here we don't see that adjustment, here we do see that adjustment. So if I was to delete this, make a new node, and we can change this to output. Now what happens is it comes in and then however uh, the data is going to be passed out of the node is how this histogram is drawn. So this is kind of cool because now is affected based on how we set these. So now if we move these, we can see that our uh, histogram is now drawing for whatever these changes are that we're adding, as you can see there. And that follow suit with all of our other curves that we have, all of our versus curves. So all of these, as you adjust them, those also move as well. So that's kind of cool. It's a, it's a nice little way to see it, especially for some of these curves here. Like we have loom versus sat, so now you know where to get your roll off um, and how far in your actual uh, uh, luminance is. And same way for the sat versus sat, you can kind of see that as well. Um, sat versus sat is kind of interesting in the way in which it works. It's kind of weird. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But the rest of the curves are pretty much self-explanatory. When you come into any of the hues, it you know pretty much just shows where the where all of that color is sitting. So that's just a really cool um, addition to DaVinci Resolve 16 now. I guess I should explain for those that don't know about these curves and how they work. Uh, it's a very big tool in uh, how you would color grade. And it does pretty much the same thing as any other tool by just manipulating the red, green, and blue channel as well as luminance. And that's why we have uh, YRGB here. The difference between our curves compared to our color wheels, our color wheels are split up as where our curves can affect the whole image, but just in a, a slightly different way. So. Here's our curves, and by default, it's just going to go left to right, and our histogram is also uh, left to right, meaning over here is gonna be our darkest bits, and over here is gonna be our highlights, our brightest bits, right? So if we were to take this corner and bring this down, you'll see all of our highlights and everything up there is going to come down, and if we bring it all the way down, obviously we have nothing, and it's the same way here. So over here is dark, then we have light, and same here dark and then we go to light. So if we would bring this up, we would then get really bright. Um, so that's kind of how, and a lot of people always talk about making like S curves that add in that contrast. And the cool thing with curves is we can set up where that, where that S curve is. So normally we would be adding more contrast. So we would wanna bring this up here. So we would add an S curve right in here to kind of pull this whole thing, all of this, um, shot out a bit so we get more contrast and obviously we're clipping as you can see over here so i guess i'll go right into explaining all of these and how they work so they're just kind of like a uh, an amount that uh each channel is uh being affected or each channel is affecting in that node so we can see that we can break them up so you can break them up individually so when they're all ganged together they they all move as one but you can break them up individually if you don't have ganging on and then you could come in and then you could manipulate you know the red channel or come into the green channel and manipulate that and bring you know bring the green out of it and you know go through all of that and then down here this is just saying how much the corrections are going to impact so now it's going to impact 
uh, completely, all of these adjustments are going to impact completely. Let's reset everything so you can understand how this works. So if I was to add in a radical S curve, so we have it really contrasty, and then we would, as we bring this down, it's going to lessen the amount that is uh, added in there. And we can take this all the way down to 50. 50 means that these don't have any effect, right? And then as we bring them down, what's going to happen is it's going to do the inverse uh, correction. So as before, if we look at this normally, we would bring this up and it's going to get brighter. And then if we would take this and go the other way, it's now going to get darker. So it's um, you're not going to be using that a lot right off the, the get go. But as you start to build things out, you might want to uh, have one of these uh, the controls not uh, as uh, touchy, I guess you could say, and you want to lessen this so that you can make a really big intricate correction. Um, so that's how you would do that. Uh, now going down to the clipping, the clipping you can do the same thing. You can take your red, green, and blue channels and separate them to how they clip or how they roll off to the clip. So. As you can see here, we have our low high and then we have our low soft and our high soft. So if we were to take, let's do the high since we have a bit of clipping here and we can look over here is where it's really gonna be noticed. We can change where our clipping point is. So we could bring this down and we're bringing down where we're clipping, right? So as you can see everything, we're bringing this down and some people like to have like their shadows kind of milky. So you could also do that here and you could bring up this um, to start to get like the milky shadows and all we're really doing here is just stating where we're going to have our clip points at right so let's reset that okay so now our uh, low soft and our high soft down here if you wa watch the waveform over here you can see how it's going to be manipulating it so as i increase this what you'll notice is all of this is getting pulled down but our actual clipping isn't really getting pulled down with it. So we pull this down, it's pulling all of this down, right? So if I move this, you can see it's pulling all of that down. It's also pulling our clipping, but our clipping isn't uh, getting pulled down as aggressively as some of these others. So what that's doing is it's, uh, you're pulling down where, you know, the clipping, but you're having it roll off softer. So you can pull a lot of those clipping areas or places that are about to clip and you can pull them back so that they roll off softly. So that's how that would work. So you can see that's how that's pulling the image. And then if we uh, just do the high, we're bringing the whole thing down, like that whole part down all the way. So that's kind of how that works. So they kind of work in with each other. And then on top of that, you could add in some type of a correction and you could also go over to your qualifier and say, no, I just want to affect just that shirt and how our curves are just going to be affecting that shirt. As you can see there, um, you can also, instead of the qualifiers and there's a ton of qualifiers, I have a video about that, but I'm probably going to make another one. We can also use our power windows and then we could have our correction just inside of that power window. So they kind of work together as well so let's go into our other curves because some people see that and they're like oh I've seen curves in in um, different programs to edit images and stuff like that but you know uh, da Vinci has so many different types of curves as well if you click this list we see all of our different curves so you have hue versus hue that's taking one hue which is like one color and we're going to switch it and change it into another color hue versus saturation they all kind of work the same way but we're going to go into a couple of those so i can show you here so if we come into here we can see where all of our colors are falling you can see the majority of this is like a greenish color so all of our majority of our colors are falling right in here we have a little bit of blue because of our shirt we have these over here and maybe up here a little bit of blue don't really have much red we have a little bit of red here it's probably the skin but mainly this plant back here so let's say we wanted to change her dress right so we would just click on her dress and if you don't have the little eyedropper, you'd come in here and go to qualifier. So we clicked on the dress and what that did is it made a little point here and it made uh, boundaries as well. It made two other points on the side. So when I move this, it's not going to affect the colors to the left and to the right of this. So if I, as I affect this, what you can see is now we're changing the color of this, but we're not affecting any of the other colors. Now you could do something similar to this where instead of using this, you would come over into your uh, 
uh, qualifier, you would qualify out the shirt, as you can see here, or if we can see here, we're qualifying out the shirt. Obviously, this would need to be a bit of a better qualify, something like that. And then we could then come over and we could adjust that color as we, you know, as we want it to. Um, but a quick way of doing that is just coming over here, hue versus hue, taking one hue, switching it out with another hue. And you know, the same way here, come over here to hue versus saturation, same deal. We're taking a color and we're increasing or decreasing the saturation. So if we take, let's say this plant back here or bush, uh, we could grab the color there and then we could just simply increase its saturation to get it to pop out of the image a little bit more. And then if you're if you're getting a selection that isn't really grabbing everything, you could also move these out and get the left and to the right of an image. And then down here, uh, whichever one is active, it's going to have the information for whichever one it's active. So you can also move these to move the point in and out and then up and down as well. Um, so if you were to move this out and let's say you get it here and it's it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it right on the line so you're not affecting the rest, you could just come in, so like, let's say like that, you just come in here, double click on the word and then it'll uh, put it out to zero. And because there's no nothing else after that, it's going to feather out all the way to my other anchor point. And we wouldn't want that, so we bring it down because we want the correction just to be in the middle here. So we're changing the saturation. And as you can see, the rest are going to be somewhat similar. We're gonna come over here, luminance, so we could take her shirt again and we could make it brighter, right? So we got darker, brighter. Obviously, I would want to add a little bit of saturation into that to get it to pop a little bit more, but getting the idea about how these work. And then you also have the others, Loom Versat taking a luminance value, so a brightness value, and then you're increasing it or decreasing it. Um, I use that one a lot for if I have like a landscape or I just have an area that is supposed to be dark, but maybe I have like color noise. So I can still have, uh, instead of just dropping down, like a lot of people will come over here and they'll just drop it down, which then you're crushing any type of uh, luminance data. So maybe I wanna keep the luminance data, but I just wanna extract the noise color out of that. You would come over here in the uh, luminance for saturation. So we're taking a luminance value and we can increase or decrease the saturation. So I would decrease that. So I my, my noise that has like color specs in it, I can decrease that and kind of pull that out so I don't really have to deal with that. And then our final one is uh, sat versus sat. And that's just taking a saturation value. So if we have like really bright saturation, so we can come over here to our vector scopes and we can get an idea. Uh, we, they changed the vector scopes a little bit, but let's uh, brighten this up so we can see it. So if we have anything that's out really far, we could bring them in line with the rest of our colors so that we're, we kind of have like the whole image on, you know, kind of relative to one another. And we don't have something that's way, you know, a, a lot more saturated than the rest of our uh, shot if we're trying to bring everything and, you know, bring it together and not have something way out there. Um, we would we'd be able to use something like this so we could bring those down. Um, so we could come here and bring those down and we're bringing these down and maybe we don't want to affect everything. So we could bring these down a bit. And you can see we're just bringing the outskirts of the saturation here um, in a bit, but we're leaving the others are alone. And like I said, this isn't relative to a color, it's just overall uh, how saturated a particular part of the image is and maybe toning that back just a little bit. Because here we might have green down here that looks good, but then the green up here is pretty crazy. So if I was to, uh, let's just reset everything and let's bring the saturation up on this. As you can see, like our, our green down here might be fine, but the green up here would be fine or isn't fine. So instead of trying to pick, you know, this particular really bright green, what we could do is we could say, okay, this really saturated bit um, up here, we could tone that down a little bit so it's in line with over here so that they're kind of okay and I don't have some like neon stuff going on over here so that they've kind of, you know, in balance with one another. So that's kind of how curves work. I mean, it gets really powerful when you use curves with qualifiers or power windows. You can do like a lot of crazy stuff. So let's say we have an image like this and we come over to Hue versus Hue and maybe we want to change her uh, shirt to be a different color. But now you can see if I turn this on and off, we're also affecting this plant over here. So maybe we don't want to affect the plant, right? So we could just come into here. We could grab a qualifier and we could just, you know, grab her 
and then not have it affect the flower over there and keep those flowers nice and blue, but then change the, the color of her uh, shirt uh, to a different color. All right, well that's curves in a nutshell. It's a little beginner course on how to use them for those who've never used them before or knew the power behind them and especially all of the different variants on the curves corrector. It's been in DaVinci for quite some time. I really like that they added the histogram in the background there. I think that that's really cool and how that works, especially when you turn it to the output so you can see how you're manipulating it. You know, it's the kind of like the overlay or like underlay but let me know in the comments if you guys use this or if you don't use it do you like that they added the histogram in the background do you not really care that they added it because you still have the ability to see the scopes let me know but with that being said my name's jr and thanks for watching